and executive director of the Richmond Blues Preservation Society, which is a nonprofit organization that preserves the culture of black music. Uh, today, uh, on February 21st, I'll be doing a lecture on the birthday of Dr. Nancy Moe, who was born uh, nine million years ago today. Uh, I'm very really honored to be speaking at the Rugby University and speaking to you as well on Dr. Neil Simone on this day in music right here. You can see, uh, as you can see, how she got her start in the land. You know, how she got her start. Uh, she actually got her start here in Lang City. She was a, a jazz artist and um, she really didn't really want to be a singer. She only wanted to just be yeah. a pianist, you know. But um, yeah, that, was, that was the main thing about being a pianist. She really didn't want to sing. so. She actually, uh, she changed her name and started performing clubs at a young age, and uh, she got a start here in Atlanta City. Um, she was uh, a great pioneer uh, in jazz music, and um, for her to be getting a start here in Atlanta City it was, it was, was a great thing. Um, I remember recalling to talk to her grandson, um, Alexander O'Neill, Alexander, uh, <laughs> sorry, from Simone. Alexander, <laughs> 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 Alexander Simone. And um, he would tell me about how his, his mother was a singer. She performs overseas, from her uh, daughter. And um, she would tell her daughter about um, how she performed in Club Harlem, which is a big club um, back in the days. She was one of the uh, very artists, great one of the few artists that would always continue to come back. She was a big favorite of Club Harlem. And, um, you know, Dr. Nia Simone was an activist as well. And um, she always spoke about what was going on in our, in our community. Like uh, Mississippi Goddamn, that was a powerful song, talking about the civil rights era. Um, you know, she always had a spoken mind. And she didn't really didn't care about who liked it or not. Um, she was a fine young woman, you know. She she was she, she, she was so bad that they trained her to be a doctor. You know, she didn't go to school. That they gave her the name Dr. Nia Simone because of what she done for the community and for activism. Um, my mother really didn't. I didn't really listen to Dr. Nia Simone as I got older. But when I started this organization and when we wanted to do something to honor. Uh, someone in Black, Black History Month, my vice president and I said, well, let's honor Dr. Nia Simone because her birthday is in February for Black History Month, and um, she got to start in Lang City. So, you know, this is a great thing to be doing this, I honor Nia Simone, as you can see, uh, for, you know, we did a great PowerPoint presentation for Dr. Nia Simone, and um, that's my vice president, Lang City. <coughs> She's the one who designed the PowerPoint, and, uh, we, we did honor, we, this is what we presented last year for my 90th birthday. I'm talking about presentation. Um, we were going to honor her. You know, um, anyone have any thoughts? Um, any, anyone can speak about their love for Dr. Nia Simone? Any song you love? Any, you know, have you, has anyone actually seen her perform live in concert? Heard the music. Uh, what's, the, what's your favorite song? Um, trying to think, I've been sitting here trying to think of the name of that song. I hear it in my head, but, um, but I can't think of the name of it. Feeling you know, good? Was it? Feeling good? That's it. Feeling yeah. good. Yeah. Feeling yeah. good. Because that's the most, you know, I, when I yeah. heard it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, feeling good. Yeah, I, I love um, Young Gifted and Black. That that song, um, when I heard that when I was young, I heard that actually by Aretha Franklin first. That's I what didn't I was really, say. But then I realized that Aretha Franklin mm -hmm. was the, the original mm -hmm. recording. But because Aretha Franklin had the album called Young Gifted and Black. So when I realized that Lisa Simone was the original singer, I was like, oh, okay, wow. So um, she always was proclaimed in her documentary, which I saw, you know, everyone has everyone seen a documentary about Lisa Simone? Mm -hmm. Okay, in that, she was really talking about as far as how, you know, she just kept herself naturally. You know, she didn't have any, she always kept her afro, she always kept her beauty, her natural beauty, which in America back then, the freaking 60s, was a, a rare for black women. You know, so she kept, she kept it real as far as her career, and she was very much loved overseas. Um, you know, she, she was a pioneer overseas. I mean, she was such a separate over there. She was toured, her grandson told me she was toured with Elvis all the time. And um, um, she would bring her daughter with her, she was young. And, um, you know, I'm just, you know, as me growing up, my, my mother 
as I got older, my mother started playing with me some more um, as I got older. And I'm more, having more great appreciation of Japanese Simone um, now that we have celebrated our birthday every year and I got more knowledge of Japanese Simone um, for being an activist, speaking about civil rights, uh, speaking out against racism. I mean, she was very, very open about that. Um, I'm just throwing up there, I'm not even going by it, I'm just speaking from my heart about Japanese Simone and my love for her. Um, I'm just honored that my organization has done this. And um, you know, anyone share your thoughts about your love for me and Simone, her favorite song? Or any? Yes, ma'am. Um, I like Forty. Yes. I love That's Forty. Nice. That was like one of my favorites. And um, I also I like. Um, I I wish I knew how how it feels to put her version of it. Um, oh yeah. 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 That's, yeah. yeah. That's my favorite. That's just my favorite. It's just got an upbeat tempo and it's real. It's real. We live in a world where. You know, she always spoke about, you know, you should, your music should reflect the times. She always said that, your music should reflect the times. And uh, there was some of the quotes right there. Um, and she was right about that. But during that time, during the civil rights era, you know, um, those times were very hard for our people. So she always spoke out against, you know, racism, bigotry. And, um, you know, that, I don't think she really cared, you know, for some people, they would have been afraid to do that because it might alter their career. but. She took a stand for that, you know, and, as a, and as, a, as a woman, as a black woman to do that, that was very rare to just take a, to take a chance on making songs like Mississippi Goddamn and mm -hmm. old women, young, gifted, and black. You know, that was, I, I'm, you know, I know she probably got some backlash from the record company if you can put that out, but regardless of that, she, she, she felt it was in her soul to do it, you know? Um, so we, we just, you know, Honored her 91st birthday, um, her legacy, as far as her being a great musician, a great activist. Um, we are honored to be just speaking on her legacy. And, um, you know, I know that uh, I, wish, I wish her grandson, you know, I told him about it. I know he, you know, he's always touring, her grandson. He always does, he does uh, rendition of her music and his live performance. And, um, you know, when he spoke to us two years ago about his love for grandmother, he just filled in his heart. You know that he wishes he still was here, and with the young people uh, learn, you know, young people learn about Dr. and Simone, and um, I'm just, you know, honored to present this presentation to you. Those wonderful quotes right there. Um, she was very hum she was a humble woman, and yes, ma'am. So her grandson followed in her footsteps. Yeah, you seen him? He was what does this mean? I was there Oh. Mm -hmm. He he was at our first lecture, and uh, he lives in New Jersey. And uh, yeah, he follows his, his mother. She she never toured here. She oh. performed overseas. So I was trying to get his mother. Uh, but you know, yeah, but he he's a great band. Band is bad. Yeah, I was dancing him. Make you touch mm -hmm. his butt. Yeah, that's all he stuff. Yeah, he he, he he's um. Oh, he turned it off now. Yeah. It was landmark days. Yeah, we can back you up. Yeah, those are landmark. Those are some accomplishments that she, you know. But what do you think about the um the movie that they made? Whether Miss, which, now you know, are you talking no, about I'm the talking about, or are you well, talking about the movie? I'm talking about the one that had all the controversy because of the, um, I don't know if it's called whitewash or blackwash or whatever. Okay, you're not talking about the documentary. Netflix. No, no, I'm talking about the you're actual about the movie. movie that starred that actress? Yeah, the one that Okay, now this is what, this from what, from what, I was in Simone when I asked him that question two years ago. Mm -hmm. They want you to ask about yeah, that's what I was saying, because there was a lot of controversy with the yeah. movie. I'm not sure how accurate the actual story of her life was, right? but of course it was overshadowed by the because controversy they, of the cast. Because, she, because she's very, very light-skinned, mm -hmm. actually. When they made her talk, yeah. I was like... I think she's, she's not even... She's not even a singer. No disrespect, she's a great actress. I'm not yeah. exactly her talent. But when I saw her, I was like... Hispanic. You know, I was kind of, I was, you know, I'm not dogging her. I'm not dogging her. I was just surprised that they chose her to be me and Simone. I was like, okay, let's see what she can do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is what it is. You know, they, you know, they, you know the, the Netflix documentary, they were part of that. Uh, the, the, uh, the family members were part of the, the documentary. Uh, what happened, Miss? What happened, Miss mm -hmm. um, So he was part of that. But as far as the movie. It was, you 
I saw it. I thought it was, I, I, I thought it was so pretty good. you think it was pretty accurate? Um, well, some of the like, some of it. I mean, you know, her going to you know Atlantic City and mm-hmm. performing, and because um, I believe she, I believe she passed away in Paris, and I'm not mistaken. I believe she passed away in Paris, I mean, in France. Um, but you know, you know, you know, of course, you know how Hollywood is. You know, they're going to do that. They, they got to make it entertaining. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's I'm not knocking. The, you know, I, there was like there was like controversy behind the film, um, but it is what it is. I, I, I spoke to Netflix myself, and um, they told me that I told them that I wanted to get the uh, the actual um, documentary so I could show it to kids every year on their birthday. So Netflix basically said to me, because um, they have a lot of documentaries on black music on Netflix, mm-hmm. and they told me, well, if you want whatever you want, whatever documentary you want, as long as you're not, as long as you're not using it for money purposes, as long as you use it for educational purposes, mm-hmm. they'll give me anything I want. So when I asked them about the Nancy Moore, I said, yeah, you can have it. So I'm going to get that documentary and play that um, probably next year or a birthday for next year. I was trying to get it for this year, but I didn't have time. So, um, but as far as the movie, again, you know, it, it, it was, I would say it was 90, maybe 80% actually. Yeah, but you got to make it entertaining. You can't make, you can't. Make it by the well, movie. eighty percent is good because you know. Well, you know, sometimes they have movies and it's just way oh, off of the, oh, the yeah. Because, because in the movie, yeah, because in the movie, yeah. or make the person look worse. Yeah, because in the movie, she she did. You know, she was a pianist. They did proclaim her as a pianist first in the movie. You know, mm-hmm. so that was accurate. I mean, I would like to see someone else do another movie on Nia Simone. Mm-hmm. You know, I like I, you know someone like um, Angie Stone. She'll be good. Mm-hmm. I was thinking of the other actress. Was someone that was in Lady, I mean, Woman King? Oh, oh you, yo, you talking about the, um, oh, you talking about the, um, but Davis, the, um, is that her name? Davis. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, she's the same complexion. I mean, I think she would do, shoot, man. Yeah, Miss Davis, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Woman King, yeah, she's a great actress. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Extremely good actress. Yeah. Is anyone no one is that anyone has the um seen Dr. Small any small um uh, you said you were saying something about uh, that we were you mentioned something uh, that they did Neil Simone. What were you talking about? You were mentioning something about Neil Simone, they would do something. Oh, it was Neil a Simone. play on Princeton University, it's Neil Simone and I can't I think they got the two ladies for it. It was that was right before the pandemic. It was, okay, so it would have played yes, Neil Simone. Yes. And I think they recorded it somewhere that might be in PBS's um yeah. Okay, so someone was actually singing her rendition of yes. the song. Yes. Do you know who it was? No, this was like five, six years ago. How was it? How, how, how was it performed? Uh, it was nice. It was good. Mm-hmm. They ran it all week. Okay. But you might have, you know, you might be able to go. You know, that's something we can maybe. Princeton maybe. University archive, you know, call them up. My contribution. You know, I, I would love next year, um, you know, like I said, my, I have a singer named Yanyanda Sunshine. Uh-huh. And, she, and she does a tribute to Daphne Simone called Love, Pain, and Activism. Mm-hmm. And she does a great, great tribute to Daphne Simone. She, did, she performed the last year on her birthday. Mm-hmm. And then maybe that's something we can do here at, at Rutgers mm-hmm. for next year. Have her perform uh, uh, a performance here for Daphne Simone. And she does a great, great tribute to Daphne Simone. Mm-hmm. And she said, I mean, she sounds just like her with a deep, mellow voice and everything. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we're on Instagram live. Are you still recording, Mr. Powell? Or? Yep, you're okay, still live. Cool. Um, yeah, so, you know, I said, this is, you know, her accomplishments. You know, she's won numerous awards. She's honored with so many yeah, different awards. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, she, that's a shame. her albums, we, I think her family right now will tell me they're still trying to, on her estate, uh, still trying to get her master, you know, trying to get her music. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I was asking Alabama about that. Um, they're still trying to get, you know, you know, with further state. So she didn't own her music? I believe she did. Um, I believe she did. I think they're still trying to, you know, yeah, trying to get that. But, a lot you know, of artists um, back then, it, it, it's harder than, yeah. I know Ray Charles was one of the, back then, he was one of the ones just trying yeah, to get the ownership of his yeah. music. Yeah. His own but back then, they, yeah. Yeah, they want to give black artists, they, they want to give black artists royalties or their masters, you're right. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm hoping that the Neil Simone State, you know, they would get her music, her image and likeness, 
you know, they own you know, hopefully they'll own, they'll own everything of you know of Nina Simone, of image, of music, because the music is the music is timeless. You know, she's released so many great albums. Um, you know, we, you know, um, my favorite, you know, Four Women is my favorite. Young Gifted yeah. Black is my favorite song by her, and I love um, Feeling Good, of course. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. Forgy, of course. You know, Forgy. Forgy. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, you know. Her, her voice was just so powerful and so um, so organic. It was just so 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 organic. What was the concert they had in um, East LA and Quest Love grabbed it all on Netflix? Oh, you talking about you talking you talking talk about Summer Soul? Yeah, she was bad. She was bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Summer of Soul. She was on it. Yeah, she was on it. That's right. Yeah. And you know what's what's funny about that? I was trying to reach out to the director of Summer of Soul. Because that was just a little documentary. I wanted to actually get the entire four-day concert because my, my my thing is, you know, he I, I was, you know they had this documentary on Hulu. On, on Hulu. Um, so I, I wanted to find out about um, to get the whole thing because they didn't really show the whole four days. So this was like a part two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and she was a part of that. She was a part of that. Yeah, get to the black, she sang. Yeah, she was part of that so much more. At Harlem Harlem Cultural Festival. Yeah, she was a part of that. Yeah, so that yeah, that was a great, great that, that to be part of that. Um, so yeah, she she was just a powerful woman. Um, I, as I said, the more I've um, we started honoring her, her, you know, her birthday every year. I learned more about Dr. Mia Simone. Yeah. As a, you know, her being an advocate for education for the youth, um, education, and um, you know, um, I definitely um, want to probably next year do. I was thinking about doing like I definitely want to honor her for like an award or, or like or maybe like a bust of her face mm -hmm. and donate it to probably the Nina Simone from you know donate it to um you know you know donate to um you know. Um, Probably the Small Foundation or present it to her grandson for the next year. You know, just like, you know, because we want to honor her every year, February 21st. Not only is it her birthday, but it's also my organization's day. We received a proclamation two years ago by uh, New Jersey Assembly and Don Guardian uh, that Rhythm Blues Friendly Society Day will be our day by Atlantic City. So we'll be honoring her birthday every year and our day. So, yeah, well, um, right now I'm working on making it a national day for my organization. I want to make it. I want to make it a, to make it a day for the state of Jersey. Then I want to make it a national day um, for February 21st as our day. So it's just steps, you know. First I got to Lake City, then I'll reach New Jersey, make it New Jersey for the state of Jersey. Get a stamp. Yeah, then make it a national day. So that's what I want to do, and honor that Nina Simone at the same time. Um, you know, um, today would have been our 91st birthday, and um, you know, I'm just hoping that uh, you know her spirit, um, you know, you know, that she, she let her know her spirit. She loves, you know, she all these years she's still being honored. You know, we're we're for part of, of what we're doing to honor her in any way we can. Um, and let the young people know about her. Um, in fact, this is Black History Month. You know, you have any questions on black music? I can ask. You know, any questions or any views of what you know on black music in general? You know, um, you know, you can answer anything. I, I'm a black music. I'm a black music educator. So, anything you want to talk about for black music? Any question? I'm with. You know, answer any question you like. You know, um, I would. You know, I think um, this is. I think Beyonce, for Black Music History, he just became the first Black artist to make number one in country charts for a song. Yeah, he got a lot of controversy. Yeah, yeah, she, she just made number one on the, on the country chart for a country for a song, but she got a lot of backlash from that. So, but she did make history. You know, that's 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 history. No one's no one's ever done that before. You know, um, well, Texas. Huh? Yeah, it's a border down country. Well, you know, well, you know, October is Country Music Month, and I honor a lot of artists who are in country music. 
So, um, you know, everyone, everyone, those um, who are not, you know, they, they think that Beyonce um, kind of like, no, but there were black artists who did country music. I mean, Ray Charles did a country song. Yeah. Bobby Moran did a country song. That's what I said. I mean, uh, country music. Yeah. No, Charlie Brown. Uh, Charlie Brown. You know, Charlie, I thought Charlie Pride, you know, so I mean, you know, black music is 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 all genres of music. I mean, you know, and, you know everyone's been influenced by black music, you know what I mean? Um, the Rolling Stones named their group after the Muddy Waters song. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The Beatles, when they came to America, they were on, they were signed to a black label called VJ Records, mm -hmm. which was owned by a black woman named Vivian Carter. And it was, in fact, BJ Records in Chicago, at one point, they were bigger than Motown Records. BJ, and from Chicago, they had Gene Chandler, Jerry Butler, Frankie Valli in Four Seasons. Yeah, BJ, the Beatles, when they came here, they signed to BJ Records. To America, yeah. I think that was Motown. Yeah. The Chicago music, and then they had Motown. Mm -hmm. They mean a little battle, who had yeah. the best. You know, if you want to see a good documentary on mm -hmm. Black Music Chicago, it's called, what are you, it's called Record Row. Mm -hmm. And it's about black music in Chicago. It talks about uh, the Shia Lights are in there, Gene Chandler, Jay Butler, Curtis Mayfield. Uh, I just got Curtis Mayfield's autobiography. I got to read that. I got the autobiography oh. written by his son. Yeah, yeah. So you know, that's what, I'm a, you know, black music culture is what we're all about. Preserving culture, black music is very important for the rhythm blues, for the rain society that we educate on black music history. Um, it's very important because you know, um, for me. This is what this is my passion. This is what I want to do: to educate on black music and to honor black music um, and to teach it. You know, I'm just honored to be here at Rutgers University to be speaking. Anyone, you know, just to be speaking to anyone about this. I love to do this. Well, you know, this is what we're all about: speaking about you know your love for black music and who you like and education on on, on for the youth. Um, the youth really need to know. You know, a lot of youth want to be in the music business. They need to know about the culture. Exactly. Real music. They need to know about the culture. They need to respect the culture. Um, I'm not knocking the young person that's out here, but some of their messages are kind of like risque. I'm not judging them, but I think it's the elders that need to just say, you know what? This is how we used to do it. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it another way. That's what they say. You You know what I mean? So. You know, I think you know. You know, so I think the elders should just pull the young, young people to the side and say, "Look, just change it up a little bit. You know, just do it this way. You know, this is how we used to do it. Um, you know, um, Club Harlem, like I said, Daphne Simone was a favorite there in Club Harlem. And um, I remember uh, two years ago, his name was Mr. Rob Hunter, and he used to go to Club Harlem all the time. He said he asked me saw. Got me some more than Sam Cook just sitting on the club on the cliffs just talking. Heard Sam Cook. He said he didn't know what they're talking about, but he just said, he just saw them sitting there talking. You know what I mean? Just having a great deep conversation. So I mean, um, you know, Sam Cook, another legendary artist, spoke about civil rights. You know, change is going to come. You know, um, you know, like, like Dr. Moore said, the music should be played at times, and that's what she did. You know, um, whenever racism occurred, she spoke about it. And um, like I said, I'm just honored that we are here to be honoring Dr. Moore on her birthday, and um, just just to reflect, just speak on speak from my heart about her, about why we want to why we're honoring her on her birthday is important, because she never really got her roses while she was here. She never really got her roses, you know what I mean? She, um, and um, that's what we want to do. We want to give those who deserve their roses, give them their roses. And she definitely one um, that deserves her roses every year. Um, I'm just honored to just speak to speak to you. I'm glad you came to attend. I appreciate you being here. I thank you for being here. Um, you know, uh, I'm just very humble. You know, I would never thought, when I saw this organization, I would never have thought that I'd be even speaking at a university, at a university, especially Rutgers, is one of the most prestigious in the country. You know, to be speaking here, it's like, wow. So I'm just honored that, that you're here to listen to me 
you know, just ramble on, not rambling, but just to hear what happened with Father, my love for Dr. Simone and uh, my organization. I thank you for being here. And, um, thank you. Thank you. Do you, you see one performance? <laughs> You have a performance? A short one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, we, 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 I know, I live with you. I'll probably go back to say just a, a like, five, 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 I didn't know she did that. I know it's a point. I thought that was. Let me just end this one. I didn't know that that was her song. I'm just going to, um, any last words for anyone before we go? Anyone can kick about Nina Simone? Anyone can go there love Nina Simone? You know, anyone want, you know, I just want to uh, thank Ms. Powell. Um, yeah. Appreciate you having this. Um, you know, I'm Perry Thompson, founder CEO of the Living Blues Pennsylvania Society. Um, we're just honored to honor this woman right here. We're just honored to, you know, on her birthday, give her her roses, speak a little bit about Dr. Nia Simone. Um, appreciate your, everyone's thoughts on your love, Nia Simone. So, um, thank you all again for coming. Um, we got some refreshments here, so. Uh, again, thank you all. I'm Perry Thompson, Tom CEO, Rhythm Blue Caribbean Society. Uh, everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Well, before Appreciate you, the love support. Before you go, I just have one more. Yes, thank sir. You. Yes, sir. Because I'm just trying, I was reading uh, your brochure. Yes. I mean, what exactly, I know you said that you like to get the news out there, because I see you with you in Houston too? Or is, is well, my vice president, she's in Houston. Uh, my okay. vice president resides in Houston. So, I mean, is it like a. Um, like a building, you can go in there, like almost like a um, well, museum. What, what, or well, what I've been speaking, I, what I've been doing right now is speaking to Lang City um, politicians. Mm -hmm. I want to actually have a preservation center okay. in Lang City, a preservation center to honor Black music. So I'm speaking to politicians. I have meetings with the mayor, meetings with the council. I have a very good connection with the politicians in Lang City. Okay. I was just to City Hall um, yesterday with my display in City Hall yesterday. Uh -huh. So the politicians, when they came by, they were like, oh, okay, um, we would have to get some funding. That's what they were telling us. You mean the Rhythm and Blues Society, the other one? Yeah. No, we're the Preservation, yeah. we're Rhythm and Blues Preservation Society. But we preserve um, all black music. Um, we know it's not, we're not, with our organization, it's not about how many awards you won, how many records you sold. If you contribute to black music culture, whether you're a singer, a producer, a writer, a one-hit wonder. As long as you contribute to black music culture, we honor you. That's what it's all about. And um, I'm getting ready to um, do some work with Canada in June. Mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of arts in Canada a lot of people don't know about. Yeah. Some black music. In fact, I think uh, Drake's from Canada. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Jennifer Cox, she's from Canada too. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm going to be doing some work with them because they didn't know that June was Black Music yeah. Month. So I'm gonna, they're going to be doing our first ever Black Music Month celebration in Canada. So I'm going to be working with them. So um, that's what we're all about. We're about educating on Black Music. Um, um, like I said, I, I'm, I'm just so honored and thrilled to be speaking about Black Music culture. But this is what I grew up listening to. Um, you know, my mother put me on. For, you know, she was always telling me about during the 50s, who she used to listen to the different radio DJs like Jocko, uh, Jack the Rapper, uh, Frankie Crocker, you heard Frankie Crocker from BLS. Um, so um, this is this is what I love to do. This is what, black music is what I love. Yes, ma'am. I bet you listen to Chicken Bone Beach. Oh, Miss Emily, yeah, yeah, I know Miss Emily. She, in fact, she, 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 she was at my Me and Simone tribute last year. She was there, and my first one. She was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, my, in, front, in fact, when I moved to Atlantic City, my ex-wife told me about Chicken Bone Beach. She told me what it was about. She said, you know, she 
said, yeah, chicken noodles with beef, they're all black. Beef everywhere. She was telling me a history about chicken bone beach, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, Miss Henrietta and the Chicken Bone Beach Foundation, so. Um, yeah. 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 It was segregated beach in Atlantic like, City where all the blacks went. Oh. 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 And you know, chicken bones is all in the same right? Bone beach. So they call it Chicken Bone Beach. Oh. Yeah, that's what my ex told me. They, they, yeah. they used to throw chicken bones in the beach. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she told me. Yeah, I said, yeah. it must have been what the seagulls got that's what she told me. She said, "That's what I said. Why well, chicken bones?" She said, "Well, fat people used to be on the beach and eat the chicken bones all the time." I'm like, really? Chicken bones. Yeah. So, yeah, I know Miss Henrietta. She's potato salad. In fact, I'm a member. Miss Henrietta and I are part. I was chosen to be a part of the Atlantic City Historical Commission, and she's a member of that as well. So we have monthly meetings in Atlantic City to. Mm -hmm. Of like minds. Yeah, we, I, I, you know, I want to work with um, other organizations. So, yeah. You're talking about Ralph Hunter. Mr. Ralph Hunter. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Ralph Hunter. Oh, she's right back. Really? She passed away about two weeks ago. I got yeah. a call now. Okay, I haven't I, I haven't reached out in a while. Okay, I got a call now. I haven't seen. Is it still? Is it still open? I haven't seen. Um, I I was there um a few months ago. Um, I gotta give him a call. I gotta sit down and talk. I didn't know him like that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know he's been a long time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Malpunta. Yeah. But just, I'm just you know again I'm just thrilled to be speaking here with y'all. I thank y'all again for coming. Um, thank you. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, Mr. Powell. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Peace and blessings, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm going to get some time for me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right.